uh, really it's a great opportunity to be here and uh, to be together in, uh, in the library of uh, the Institute for Advanced Studies uh, in Nantes, uh, spending some time together, discussing, exchanging. And uh, I know that, that um, uh, our, 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 our common work is about based mainly upon, this is what everybody thinks, is based mainly upon translation. Yuda is uh, translating, he is translating my novels to Hebrew and he is, uh, he plays a major role in, uh, in, in the way things proceed, uh, especially when I use uh, 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 Hebrew as a language, when I speak about, uh, about uh, 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 Israeli characters and so on. But, but really, uh, uh, the issue is much more complex. We are not here to speak about translation. We are here to speak about life and about literature. Now, to go back to translation, since it's the first question, uh, I, have, uh, I have a problem with those who think that traduction uh, 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 c'est trahison. That is, translation is a uh, 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 betrayal. Treason. Treason is a treason. Uh, because everybody will tell you that through translation, a book, a novel, a literary work will lose 20 to 40 percent of its literary uh, 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 importance. And every time I think, then. The idea that I have that if a book cannot lose 20%, it must not only not be translated, it must not be written. <laughs> so the idea is losing or gaining. This yeah. is the enjeu, which is very complicated. Now, in the... the in, lost in translation or gained in translation. Right. Is, yeah. I mean, no, and, 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 and the meaning changes, and the meaning, uh, you know, uh, uh, ideas, words, situations travel and and this is a kind of a travel so the way i think of my when 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 i i, I, I see my novels in translation now in english and in french it's very easy because i know both languages and i can understand what's going on but in, in other languages between them hebrew i don't know uh, the language no, really you know, you know I, I know a little bit but but uh, when when Lately, I had the Polish translation of uh, our, our the children of the ghetto, Asmi uh, Adam, and I, I couldn't I couldn't go through it at all. Then I I thought two things. The first one is that the heroes of my novels uh, uh, have a, a more intense uh, 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 experience in life than me. They travel. Mm -hmm. They don't only travel the way I'm traveling, I'm, take, I'm, I'm leaving Beirut to come to, to, to Nantes. They travel profoundly, that is, they travel in language, which this is the major travel. And, 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 and so uh, 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 I feel towards them that, uh, that they go beyond me a lot. And here I, I remember this idea which we find in 1001 Nights that uh, 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 writing is, it, is traveling. You travel in order to write. Here you write in order to travel. Exactly. So it's a combination, it's a combination of things. Now for the Hebrew translation, uh, actually uh, when Gate of the Sun came out in Arabic, I wanted it to be translated in Hebrew. And I, I said this to, to my friends, because, you know, it takes place during the Nakba. Uh, uh, it was, I think it's the first uh, novel uh, which dealt seriously with the events of the Nakba of 1948. Uh, and I thought profoundly that it must be in Hebrew and that uh, the Israeli uh, readers must read it. They must read it because it's a mirror, it's their mirror, the same way as the Israelis are the mirrors of the Palestinians. So, so this is mirroring each other. And then 
when I met uh, with uh, with uh, Yuda and and the project of Maktoub, which intrigued me a lot, uh, which is a great work of translation uh, from Arabic to Hebrew, I felt that this is the way. I mean, things must go this way, and and it go this way to come back. So it's a mirror. I'm mirroring through them. I'm seeing myself through. Uh, I uh, think language, if this I language. Of course. For a minute, of course. This is uh, very important because what you're actually saying that translation is not a one way uh, ticket, but uh, it's a circular kind of thing where there is a feedback or whatever you want to call it between the source uh, text and the target text or between the author and the translator. So uh, we see it together. Here at Nantes, and we work together. For example, we started working on your book, Rajulan Yashbahuni, which is actually you are writing. It just came out. You are writing, and I was translating at the same time. I mean, this is a stank- something that never. I don't know if any any author ex- uh, translator had experienced before, and I think this is uh, something fascinating, because um, because we meet here in uh, so-called the third space, because I I wish I could come to Beirut, and I wish you could come to Tel Aviv, but that's, you know, dommage, that doesn't happen. And I think that what we do here is to meet uh, those two binary opposite and surmount them uh, in our work together, as as I see it. In this sense, Yuda, this is not only a literary project. It's a literary project, of course. You are, uh, and and what you said about uh, this experience. Of, this is the only time, this is the first time in my life, and maybe the last time in my life that I was while writing someone, uh, it, someone was translating, and it was, it was a big big risk for me. Uh, you know, you write, you write, you don't know. You have, and, and then I changed a lot, and, and it was difficult for you, and so on and so forth. But it was very risky. But nonetheless, uh, 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 the 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 major the major thing here is that uh, uh, what we are doing is more than literary. Uh, uh, it it goes, and even I think it's it goes beyond politics, politics, politician, as the French says. Uh, say uh, that is we are not dealing with real politics that's taking place now. We are dealing with the human, uh, with the human experience, with the human sufferings, in a region, which since seventy-four years, yeah, and since the year I was born, actually, uh, 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 was condemned to wars and to blood, and and to hatred, and 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 to falsification of its history and so on and so forth. So what we are what we we are here in is more than politics. It's it's trying to hear to understand the language of pain in order to dream or in order to 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 try to work together I try to work a language the language of dream which means that there must be a way out of this of this dilemma, and both of us are are convinced that uh, the way out is a uh, uh, it's not a two state solution, which was from the beginning a, a, st- idea. a stupid idea, or Oslo, which was from the beginning a colonial trap for the Palestinians, but through a binational uh, state. Now. When I, we speak of this now, if, if you look around us and we see what's happening now in Palestine, uh, in Palestine and in Israel, in Palestine with these uh, 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 attacks on the Palestinians, with these massacres that are taking place, with Hawara and Nablus and, and Jenin and so on, you say, what's we are dreaming? Yes, we are dreaming. Yes, we are dreaming. And if you look at the Israeli society, which is going through a big, big uh, 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 rift between its components and and this idea of of democracy, Jewish 
Jewish democracy or not democracy and so on and so forth. We are dreaming in the sense that we represent profoundly a real human approach, a real, uh, a pro, a real uh, a vision that we deserve life and that life is more important than nationals, nationalities, ideologies, uh, 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 territorial uh, uh, borders, and so on. That's, 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 I, agree, I agree. I I must agree with the role of with literature uh, in our life because I've learned it through you. And I must mention this this fascinating thing when, uh, the, if you remember, in 2013, a group of people uh, tried to uh, Palestinians tried to create a settlement in the E1 uh, no. territory between uh, Jerusalem and Jericho in order to block the continuity uh, of the occupation. Of, of the occupation. And they called the settlements Babi Shams, Gate of the Sun, uh, after your book. And so this in incarnation of literature in reality and vice versa. I was very moved by that. And uh, I saw yeah, yeah. The Since you mentioned, you know, that this is the, the most... Uh, emotional experience I went through all my career. Uh, uh, because the, the guys, the, 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 the young people, they were about 250, 300, who created this village, they called it the village of Baby Shams, contacted me and I was in, 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 in every, every hour. The Skype. Yeah, speaking and seeing them and discussing with them. And then once they made, a, they made a, a, at night, they made fire and 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 everyone read one page of my no, of the novel and I, I couldn't I couldn't believe my eyes, but what is more interesting that after the village was destroyed, they continued they rebuilt another village, and they called it uh, uh, the grandsons of Yunus Yunus the hero of uh, the major character in Bab Shams, which means what, which means that literature is life. And, if, and, and here we come to this idea of, 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 of dialogue. I do not write alone. I write alone, of course, like all writers. And you translate alone, and you work alone. You are a university professor, you are a sociologue, and uh, a sociologist, and then at one moment uh, you rediscovered uh, your... Uh, discovered you, you in this literature. And you, no, no, <laughs> your roots as an Iraqi, and then you discovered literature, and, and, and then you work in, 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 you went through this project of Maktoub, which is a great project. But the thing is, literature is a dialogue. I am speaking with others. I am taking stories from others. And I think you are doing the same thing in a different way. Yeah, for example, uh, I just uh, mentioned, you mentioned Maktoub. Of course, Maktoub is the, uh, something which is uh, very important to me because... Uh, what we do in Maktoub, I mean, there were translation from Arabic to Hebrew, what we do in Maktoub, since we established Maktoub, is that we do it by nationally. Uh, I don't uh, translate by myself, I translate with my Palestinian friends, Kifah Abu Khalim, Yad Bagoti, Hanan Saadi, Luai Wata, my friend, we are a group of Jews and Palestinians who work together, and as you, mentioned the idea that we are kind of a beacon, even though the current politics does not, uh, I say, correspond to that, it's there as an option. It's an option, I think that Maktoub is also an option for binationalism in Palestine as a political idea. And uh, I hope that I'm not exaggerating uh, with this. And here is the, di the dialogue with you, it means a lot to me, to, 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 as, as, as a person, as a translator, in all levels. But um, I think that uh, what we do here, you, you, talk, you talk about writing collectively, translation became in the modern era an individualistic uh, a, a, a approach, an yeah. individualistic craft. And that doesn't make sense. Where is the uh, dialogue here? If you go back to Hunan ibn Ishaq al-Abadi, in Baghdad, he works with. He was a, was coined the Sheikh of Mutarjumin. He was uh, working with other people, and uh, many other examples that we, people were working together, and not 
you know, a sole individual working on text and translating it. We speak, we dialogue, there's oral, and those kind of things. I won't forget this wonderful experience last year when we, heard, we, heard, we have been here together, that you are writing in the morning, and I was waiting in my office in the afternoon for you, and you read me paragraphs from what you have written. For me, as a translator, to hear you in your voice reading this text that you've just written was, a, was a, uh, uh, you know, an experience for life, which, uh, you know, I don't know where translators uh, have this kind of... Uh, Look, you know, this, is, this, this goes, I, I think also this goes beyond uh, our work, beyond translation. This is friendship. And uh, this is, you, you, you think you're our friend? <laughs> I th- no, no. I, I, this is this is the essence of things. Yeah. And you know, our friendship, and this friend is based upon our commit, both of us, upon our commitment to justice and our love to the language and to literature. We are both in love. We play. I, what does writers do? They play with language. And you, what you do in, when you are translating, also you play with the language. You, you, you go through it, above it, under it, and, and this is the way where we do. And, and this is in the context of a very, very clear point of departure, which is our belief in justice. That in Palestine, now we are speaking about Palestine because we, well, this this huge work is about Palestine, but in Palestine and anywhere in the world, we are in the in the camp of the oppressed, of the marginalized, of the indi- indigenous, indigenous people. Peoples. This is the major point, and and when we are like this and we are working together, and and we are in love with with. With, with language, we are in love with literature, we, you discover the layers in your own language, the layers of Arabic, which were sub, uh, uh, destroyed by the colonial project. I discover, I discover in my language the layers of other languages. You know, in Arabic, you know, you'll speak now about Hebrew because this is, uh, you're, you're about Hebrew and Arabic, but in Arabic, uh, uh, when I was writing my novel Yalu, uh, who's one, who's here, whose main character is a, is a, is a Syriac, is a, is a, who speaks, whose family, Aramaic. whose family speaks Aramaic, which is a langu- dead language now, and I discovered that what Aramaic melted in Arabic, and that about twenty to thirty percent of the spoken Arabic in 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 in, in Lebanon, Syria, Palestine is Aramaic, but this is Arabic also. I mean, so discovering the layers of language. Now, in your job, it's much more interesting because here there is how languages enter each other's and melt. In your situation, it is how a colonial project can destroy this project of, 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 of melting. Of melting. Yeah. yeah, this is, uh, this is uh, also something that comes to mind when I translated uh, your novel, Stella Maris, and I have uh, an experience which is also unique and unprecedented uh, in my, uh, in any biography, I think. And because uh, the book is about Haifa, and I was sitting in Haifa when I translated, and in the book there are Hebrew, there is Hebrew, you use Hebrew. And I think that this is something so unique because uh, no uh, translator to French or English or Polish or whatever would understand the relationship between the Arabic and the Hebrew in that uh, in one in, in one novel. I mean, because you know, you, we usually know that uh, what we call neoclassical translation is based on one language, one translator, and one version. And we do many versions. You do several languages. And we don't work alone. So it's, a, it's really a revolution in a way we think about literature and translation. And, and, and this is very, very exciting because you play in your, 
in your uh, novels a lot with language. Or oh, I would call, I don't know if there is such a thing, meta-language. The language about language. Because you bring the, langu the language to the nth degree. To the nth degree. And then there is something. There's silence. There's end. There's no end. There's an end. There's suicide. I mean, you bring the thing to the, to the, to the uh, extreme in the sense of language, if, I, if you agree with me. And this is a fascinating... Uh, experience, you know, I, I, I sit and I think about those uh, possibilities and I go, uh, go, go mad because you uh, provide me with obstacles that I have to surmount and but they are fascinating uh, obstacles. If I mention these examples that I always like to mention of love, and uh, this is in uh, one of the books, uh, Adam, the protagonist, of the trilogy. In Stella Maris. In Stella Maris, yeah. yeah. And uh, Adam mentions uh, in Arabic to his Jewish girlfriend, uh, there's a dialogue, and although she's of Iraqi origin, she doesn't speak uh, Arabic, and he mentions to her uh, 20 uh, synonyms uh, to the word love, uh, and you mention them in Arabic, and now as a translator that I have to uh, translate that to Hebrew, I'm, you know, I'm in a, a position of, uh, in a problem because there are not, in Hebrew you can find six, seven words to love. So how do you, how do you pour uh, 20 words into six or seven? This is, you cannot do it if not you do a dialogue and you, otherwise you get in some dictionary loop and you get to hell with this. Yes. Look, look. Uh, uh, it's very interesting what you are saying. But when, when, you, when you said that, I take language. Actually, I don't take language. The lang it, it take, You know, the, the, the real, the re my real problem with with writing, my real experience, let's say, not problem, is that writing takes me, leads you, leads me, and and I'm astonished all the time, you and. Astonished, and it leads me not because I'm a genius, I'm not, you by are. the way. No, no, I'm not. Because actually, I collect language from the way people speak it. I do not bring language from dictionaries or from top down yeah. or, or from books, I bring language from. Uh, 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 the speech from the mouths of people. This is what they are. These people who are participating, who are inside the novel, they are leading me towards another language. Of course, I do not use the language the way and Typically, I mean the same way, as, because otherwise you are not a writer, you are just... Uh, 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 yeah, uh, yeah. And, and, and otherwise you are not making a literature, you are making... Uh, uh, anthropology, which is not the case, but this inspires the whole thing, and this makes me feel that I am part of a collective work, even if I am alone in my room. Now, when you spoke about translation as a collective work, I think that also writing is a collective work. Now, how, in a moment, these two collective works can meet, and 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 why they meet. And I think they meet because in, we are uh, rediscovering the meaning of things. We are refusing the dominant ideologies. We are refusing uh, this, dominant language, this yeah. dominant language. We are refusing the dominant politics. We are refusing occupation. We are, we are, and he, from here emerges uh, uh, this, this connection. And from here, I'm the author, yes, but what does it mean? I mean, every time I tell this story, which I told you several times, I think, that uh, if you are a good, if there is a good novel, after 50, 100 years, people will remember the name, the heroes the, the, of the novel, and they will forget the writer. <laughs> and if it's a bad novel, they will forget both. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> That's very good.